Welcome to EMP Psych Works. My name is Joe, and uh, this is my shop. Uh, today we're going to have some fun, get to assemble a 2018 ZX14 motor. Okay, this particular cylinder has been bored 80 to 86 millimeters, which is 2 millimeters bigger than a stock bore, um, to accept a set of uh, CP Carrillo pistons. We've got the crankshaft lightened and balanced. Um, this thing's also going to get the balancer deletes. Let's get to it. Install the crank here. Very carefully. Now this is this is uh, how plastic gauge comes. Um, this is kind of like an envelope with a thin piece of plastic wire basically. So and you, you trim these, um, each one of these little increments and then set the plastic gauge on the journals you're trying to measure. And then we carefully put the top, um, the top part of the case on and torque everything down and that'll give us what, that'll give us the clearance in between the bearing and the journal. All right, it's a little too hard to open. But this is the plastic gauge. The wire and you just set it on the journal. Alright, that's the plastic gauge on the journal there. It's a little bit of a close up. Main bolt in. Now these are numbered. So tighten them down in the, the sequence, um, then pull this off and see where we're at. Right, these bolts get torqued to 35 foot pounds, so I'm going to do it in two steps. I'm going to go 20. And then 35. Alright, now remove them and let's measure the plastic gauge. All right, plastic gauge looks good, so I'll try to get a closer look here. So on the the sheathing for the plastic gauge, um, there is different increments in here, one thousandths, a thousand and a half, two, three, and there are different thicknesses here. These correspond to how much the plastic gauge is smashed. Um, how far it expands dictates the clearance, the oil clearance that you're going to have between your journal and your bearing. So. So the gap is bigger than the two thou, so I'm just under two thou there. So yeah, each one of these is just a little bit wider than the mark for the two thousands, which is this first green mark. So it's, they're in between one and a half thousandths and two thousandths clearance. So I have to double check with the spec as I think that's right on, but I'm going to go double check and uh, I'll be back with you. All right, the bearing clearance uh, spec is 1.2 thousandths to 2.5 thousandths, so we are pretty much in the middle of that. Uh, this measure, this uh, this uh, using plastic gauge isn't like a, a super accurate way to measure. It gives you kind of a range, um, and since we are just a little bit smaller than two thousandths, we are perfect. So main bearings are solid. Um, next step is to measure the rod bearings, and it's the uh, the same. The same, uh, the same process. Uh, actually, now that I think about it, while I have it like this, I'm going to uh, put the thrust washers in and measure the thrust clearance just to make sure that's good. So when I was being trained, uh, one of the main things that that was instilled in me is attention to detail. And another thing I've kind of added to that was always stri I'm striving for perfection in uh, everything that I do, especially in an engine. 
Um, there's no room for, oh, it's close enough. No, it has to be right on. So uh, get the thrust bearings in here and we'll, we'll check that. All right, here's the setup I have to do the thrust clearance. Um, I can use a feeler gauge, but this seemed like a little bit easier. So we're looking for basically two to ten thousandths. So we're right at six. So perfect. All right, now we need to measure the the piston to bore clearance, just to double check and make sure everything is right on. Spec is two thousandths. So we take our your dial indicator here, your dial bore gauge. And you want to set it to zero at the smallest point. So this this block is pretty good, man. It's maybe a couple tenth tenth a couple tenths out around, which is immaculate. All right, we're not to show this, but you want to get this set to zero, the same and it transfers the measurement from the dial indicator to the uh, micrometer here. And this is what I'm looking at. Zero. 3.483. So then we take our piston and measure the skirt. And you want it to be able to turn through here with just slight drag. And then it'll be a good good mark. 3.324. Do a little math. Three point three eight four three minus three point three eight two four equals one point nine thousand. So the spec is two, so that's that's good. A tenth isn't gonna make that much of a difference. So the spec has gotta gotta be plus or minus a certain amount. So Piston to bore clearance is good. I already checked all, all of them, all four of the uh, cylinders here and pistons. So piston weight and rod weight are the next things. I'm going to balance all the pistons and then uh, balance the rods and then then this bottom end will be able to go back together. All right, we're going to balance these uh, pistons out. So the object is to get them um, to get these the weight of the pistons, pins, rings, uh, piston pin clips, all within, um, as close as we can get them, within a gram or two. So, so this one's about a tenth of a gram, or it's about a gram too much, or 0.8 grams too heavy. So I'm thinking I can get that a little bit better. Um, some room here to take off some material. So, get my safety glasses and uh, and work on that a little bit. So I take my Dremel. Right, 233.6, right on the money. So this one can use a little bit. Two thirty-three point six. 233.7, let's...
are all the same. Now for the ring packs. Twenty one. Twenty point nine. Twenty point nine, twenty one. All right, these ones are heavier. Sixty one point six, sixty one point seven, so. These are all will be balanced. They're all way the same. In an inline four, you don't have to count for the weight of the pistons and the rods and the rings and the, the pins and the, the uh, retainers for the balance of the crank because it balances um, the forces kind of counteract it themselves. So as long as the pistons weigh the same. And we're going to have a really good, really good motor here. Alright, now we're going to set the ring gap for our uh, piston rings here. Um, so according to CP, I got a new set of CP Carrillo uh, piston rings. Uh, the top, the compression ring is four and a half thousandths times the bore. Gives us... Fifteen thousandths, and then the second ring, the oil ring, is four to eight thousandths times the bore, so thirteen thirty thousandths, thirteen to thirty. So uh, the second ring has to be larger than the first ring, though. So the thirteen is going to be too small for our purposes. So. Try to get the first ring to 15 on the money, and then the second ring uh, larger than 15, but not 30. So this one definitely is our top ring. Um, it's the lighter one. The other one is darker. So we're going to say this is four. And we want to get it square into the bore. And I do that by using the piston. So there's flat, flat spots on the piston here, and we can use that to get it square into the bore, just by feel. We're going to take our feeler gauge. And we're looking for 15 thousandths. Yeah, about 6 thousandths. So, off to the ring filer. All right, after you file it, um, I'm going to take a uh, stone or a very fine file and get all the uh, burrs off of it because those will scratch your cylinder. And especially as Nicosil cylinders, you don't want that. So same process. Uh, you just basically you just want to go slowly until you get what you're looking for. So that's 15. Will 16 go? Wow, 16 won't go. That is perfect. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Fuck yeah. Never works out that way. 15 more to go. All 
All right, that starts off almost at 15. So. All right, we got more than 15, less than 20. Go a little bit more. crazy there. I didn't go more than 30. No, it's between 20 and 25, so we're, we're perfect. Okay, now we're going to balance the big end of the rods. Um, so the big end is considered rotating mass, and the small end is reciprocating mass. So you can't just measure, you can't just weigh the whole rod and even them out because uh, they have different types of force that are uh, on them so in order to balance to be equal we have to measure the big end um, and negate the, the, the little end and then we'll turn it around and do the other the, and measure the little end so that's what this fixture does here Pretty repeatable results now. This is the setup. All right, thanks for watching me measure up and uh, get this ZX14 motor ready to be installed. Um, next step, basically clean it up and, uh, and assemble it. I'm still waiting on a cam, but should be here within the next couple days, hopefully no more much more than a week. Um, again, thanks for watching. This is Joe with EMP Cycle Works.